In this video I'm going to explain what Compiler Explorer is and why you should care. Compiler Explorer is a website at godbolt.org. This is a zoomed in version of the UI so that you can see it on the video a little bit easier. On the left hand side we have an area which shows C++ source code, although many other languages are also supported. I'm going to mostly spend some time talking about C++ here as this is the language I know most about. On the left hand side is the source code and you can see here this is a very simple function to take a number and return the square of that number. And then on the right hand side is the assembly code that the compiler emits. You can pick from many different compilers, very many different compilers here. Um, I'm currently using GCC 7.3 you can give different command line options to the compiler here. So this is just with no compile options at all. I'm going to add a small amount of optimization. And now you can see that the assembly code generated has changed. It's a lot smaller. The coloration, the highlight in the background of this line here, the blue um, highlight, corresponds to uh, this instruction over here which has the same color background. So this here is the num times num line and on the other side you can see that the same the same background on the right hand side corresponds to the same line. So this num times num corresponds to this imul of edi and edi. There are tool tips for instructions if you're not sure what they are and there are very many instructions. So this works for x86 assembly only currently. So this may give you some idea um, what, what's going on. The main reason of this site is to allow you to develop an intuition about what the compiler is able to do. So for example, um, you can use uh, a load or save, and we can load from one of the examples. There are a few examples built in. You can load from the file system directly, or you can store some of the files in browser local storage too. I'm going to load a sum over an array. So this function now takes an input array and a length, and it runs over that array, and sums up all of the values that are inside that array and then returns it. And you can see on the right hand side here, the compiler has emitted um, a little bit more complicated code. On optimization level two, the code pretty much directly corresponds to the code on the right. There is a little bit of um, complexity here where the loop has been separated uh, into two parts where there's a sort of setup part of the loop and then the comparison of the loop so this, this yellow area of the four is broken into two places. One is the sort of top of the loop and the other part is the bottom part of the loop. The add in the middle here corresponds to these two instructions here, which is the summation in an accumulator register of the current part of the uh, array that's being summed over uh, and the increment of that pointer to get to the next element. And there's another part at the beginning here where the compiler is testing to see if there is in fact any work to do. If length was zero or less than or equal to zero, it uh, jumps if less than or equal to this L4 label here. Putting the optimization level to three, you can see the compiler works an awful lot harder and has generated an awful lot more code, including some pretty complicated looking uh, instructions which turn out to be SSSE instructions. Let's go back to a simple version for a second. We'll go through some of the other aspects of the UI, including some features you may not be aware of. So first of all, there are a number of filters that are applied to the output from the compiler. The compiler likes to generate an awful lot of information. Um, if I turn off the filter that gets rid of the directives, we can see that the actual output is a lot longer. So here is the debug information. Um, here is some information about the the symbol linkages and, and where the procedures start and stop. So that's usually filtered off. Similarly, there is a label filter here. The compiler emits many, many labels and um, Compiler Explorer tries its best to remove those labels that are not directly relevant to the code you're looking at, but you can disable that filter. We can get rid of the comments that the compiler puts in. Um, we can crush the white space. It likes to put lots of white space in, so it's on by default. But by default, we show everything in Intel syntax, which means that the destination register is on the left-hand side of the instruction. If you prefer the GNU um, way, the GNU default, which is the at and syntax, you can disable it here. Um, by default, we mangle, so uh, we demangle. 
So this test function int star int is not really the name of the function. The name of the function really is this underscore z12 test function PII. Um, but you can enable and disable the demangler. And then you can also actually compile it to binary. Um, and this side, now we actually compile and link the executable behind the scenes. And now the address in the, the final image and the, the opcode bytes, along with all of the other funny little things, so like the uh, the assembler inserts these padding um, instructions to line things up to relevant places, and also the here's a, here's a main. Um, these are available and invisible now if you um, do a compile to binary. There are many compilers, as I've said before. This text box here has um, the drop down for all of them, but it's also searchable. You can hit backspace and then you can type for example um, trunk which is what I like to do to get the trunk builds of either GCC or Clang which are built daily so let's have a look at this code in the trunk version of Clang here you can see the Clang emits quite different code for for this um, obviously every compiler will do something slightly different and the uh, optimizer settings aren't necessarily the same across uh, all compilers so minus 01 on one compiler may be very different to 01 on another Over here, we can also add another compiler. So I can actually click and drag from that add dialog and drop a new compiler. This is another compiler compiling the same source code on this side here. So now I can bring up minus 01 and I'm gonna to go to trunk again here and I'm gonna pick GCC. So now we have trunk GCC on 01 on the lower half let me zoom in. I was zooming a little bit more to so you can see what's going on here. Trunk GCC versus Trunk Clang. This is quite an interesting way of seeing how different compilers treat your code. We can drag down a difference view. A difference view by default diffs the two editors that are uh, available if you have two editors. So let me zoom this up and then I can click this button up here to maximize this whole little window. And so here we actually have a diff of the two side by side. As you can see, there's the same number of instructions. Well, actually, no, that's not true. There is one more instruction here on the GCC side, but ultimately they're very, very similar. Let me just close the diff view. I'm gonna reset the UI here, which clears the code. And I need to zoom back in again quickly. And I'm going to put O2 as the compiler options. And now we can start looking at some more interesting things we can do on the right hand side. I'm going to type in some completely new code and Compiler Explorer compiles as I type. So I'm going to make a function called test that takes an integer x. So to start with, we're just going to return x. And now we can see that that corresponds to just a simple move instruction on the right hand side. On x86 at least, the parameters coming into the function, the first parameter goes into the EDI register, but the return value is expected in the EAX register. So this simple routine that does nothing other than return the integer that was passed in corresponds to a single move from the EDI, where the input parameter came from, to the EAX re result register. If we were going to multiply this by 7 in our test code, we can now see the compiler on the right hand side has generated different code, understandably. In this instance, it hasn't used a multiply, it's actually done something a little bit cleverer. We can see that it's using this LEA instruction, which is the load effective address. This is a very complicated sounding uh, description of the in, uh, instruction here. This is from Intel's own documentation, so it's not necessarily that clear. But effectively it says, do this computation here and it's a very simplistic instruction used for address calculation but in this instance the compiler has used it to do a multiply by 8 so this is 0 plus RDI times 8 obviously says put RDI times 8 into the EAX register now we have X times 8 in EAX and then this second instruction says take away the original EDI from that 8 times version so obviously if you take 8x minus x, you end up with 7x. This gives us the 7 times x value in the EAX register, and so our test routine returns 7 times x. 
Compiler is doing this behind the scenes for us. We don't have to think about it when we write the code on the left-hand side here. If we do something more complicated, the compiler is unable to optimize in the same way, and so it just returns an instruction, a single instruction, an IMAL instruction to do the multiplication. Um, it's a slightly slower instruction, but it's, it's still pretty efficient. So as we type code on the left-hand side, we can see the results pretty much straight away on the right-hand side. Down here it says that it took 465 milliseconds to uh, compile this particular example. Obviously, as you write more and more code, it gets more complicated and the compiler stops being quite so interactive, but this is still a very useful thing to be able to do. While you're typing, of course, the compiler um, is working behind the scenes and oftentimes um, you're only halfway through writing something. You'll see that you'll get a compilation failed and if you put uh, hover your mouse, you can see that um, there's the compiler error. You can also hit F8 to bring up and toggle through all of the errors that are there. But if we go down and want to see more information, we can drag up this output window here. Now we can see that um, we have the full error message here. This links up to the code. Um, we can fix our error there. If we had warnings on, and for example, did not return something from this, similarly, we see a little green squiggle here. It's corresponding to the warning. And in our output window down here, we can that there has also been a warning. These panes can be resized and dragged and moved around. You can pick them up and drag them around and if you drag it to the very bottom or the very sides you can snap it there. This now ends up looking more like an IDE at this point. There are many other things that Compiler Explorer can do. Um, I'll cover these in another video. If you have any comments please leave them below and if you want to be notified when the next Compiler Explorer video or one of any other of my videos are ready then don't forget to subscribe.